We planted, we watered, the fullness of time has come, and God has brought the increase. Join our guest speakers, Dr. and Mrs. Tunde Bakare, and host Maureen and Bailey Oshumakine at the Envoy Nations Harvest Summit and second year anniversary, holding on the 23rd and 24th of September 2022. Venue is the Mekur Grand Hotel, Granby Street, Queens Hall, Leicester. This is your season of Alice. Involvement with a commission. It's been 30 years of relating with Dr. Tony Bakari. I met Pastor in 1993. And um, ever since then, he's been my spiritual father. I've, I'm one that never had two spiritual fathers, ever. He's been one and only for 30 years. This year makes it exactly 30 years. We met when I was in secondary school. And I've been following him ever since then. I'll tell you more tomorrow. But because tonight I just want us, I sense in my spirit that there's so much to unpack. So I, I just get out of the way and we can just get into it tonight. For the standing ovation with Jesus joy, please receive with me. My father, Dr. Tude. because it's cold hallelujah if you have the breath of life in you praise the Lord sense in the spirit and I trust God that he will fulfill his word concerning you in the name of Jesus it's such a joy for my wife and I to be with the envoy nation with a commission especially for your second anniversary. I'm not surprised at all that wherever PD will go is a question of time. A church will be planted. <laughs> and I know this is not the last one. Don't be shocked when it beats a goodbye <laughs> and it goes to another city. Let me start by thanking my dearest daughter. I gave her the name Favor in Joss. One of our outreaches there just before they got married. They won't tell you how I found out what was happening. Uh, we were having rock, Revelation of Christ the King in Abelkuta, a meeting put together by him. I think I attended about three times. And one of those days, he was about to introduce me. And my eyes caught with her eyes. And I turned to Dele, who is that lady? I said, I'm, I actually, uh, <laughs> the rest is history. Thank God for their union. Um, I want to thank you for being a solid supporter of your husband in prayer and in many other ways. I once asked my wife, I said, why do you just follow me? We left in Nigeria for vacation in 1994 to England. The third day we got there, the Lord said, stay in this land till I tell you to return. 
that simple sentence or word lasted 18 months. And we obeyed. We wanted to plant a church. We paid for space and everything. What would I be doing? I already planted a church in Nigeria. I'm going to be here for a long time, indefinite. What would I be doing here? So we got a hall. We paid. We did everything. Three days to our takeoff, the Lord said, I didn't bring you here to plant a church. I brought here, you here to strengthen churches. We ended up commissioning six ministries in those 18 months. By the time we returned home, two-thirds of our people were gone. I saw a hall that was almost empty. And as I got there that morning, my heart was almost uh, completely broken. And God said, I knew later it was in the Bible. He said, I want you to order for 50 dozen more chairs. I look at empty hall. Lord, what are you saying? He said, order for 50. Okay. I obeyed. And I announced that we are going to order for 50. The people looked at me as funny. And I heard, you will not see wind, you will not see rain, but you will find water. You know what? In less than a month, we had to fill to buy more chairs. Wow. Because people heard I was back, some returned, new people came. And I turned to my wife and said, why do you always follow me? He, she had already filled up the freezers with food and everything before we came on short vacation in case there would be crisis. He said, you know what? I know two things. You love God. You love your family. You will never put us to danger. Yeah. You can be rest assured that my son will always do the same. Yes, Thank you for supporting him all the time. Yeah. You call him Pimo. And what does that mean? Okay. Your PMO is PMO, right? Yes, My PMO is different. My PMO is PMOW. Prayer and Ministry of the Word. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what my PMO is. I gave her that name when she wrote the book, uh, the Proverbs 31 couple. Thank you for being there. And Dele, you know, we can't stop loving you. Of all my sons in the faith, Dele is the one who lived in the same house with me yes, sir. throughout his youth service and was there, rain or shine, and followed me everywhere you can imagine. Now I'm following him. <laughs> <laughs> because I had no business in Leicester, but he had been putting pressure. Um, whenever you want to come, sir, anytime you'd like to come, sir. And I just picked my phone one day, and I said, um, what's your calendar like? I have a, only one space for the rest of the year, September 24. I don't give that date out, because I got born again today, 49 years ago. <laughs> so it's not a time to spend with you, it's a time to invest. Yes, I would do like Paul, as if I'm passing out as if I'm going away. It's not your time to go. But the deposit you receive today, I'm not spending time, I'm investing time. And the Lord showed me a vision overnight. He said, you're going to find out in the days to come that time will be more expensive than money. You have always said time is money. I saw some things in the night that it would take a heavy load of money to tie someone down to do something for just a moment. I pray that the investment this day will yield rich dividends in the days to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, PD, PhD. And how can I thank Professor Shun Koladi for being such a devoted servant of God, apart from being an academic. Uh, Many of you have not been to the Citadel. He's been there. He came there and gave me a book. I'm still trying to figure out to understand uh, the composition and the, the level of uh, sophisticated language used in that book. Thank you so very much. God bless you. You may be seated, sir. Uh, 
all the way from Manchester and all the way from Abuja. I don't want to share the rest. God will raise people to just be there for you. If there is anyone I know who is praying heartily not for what to get from me, but for what the Lord has put in his heart concerning me, it is this wonderful couple, Dr. Babajide and Pastor Shola Oluwo. You call him Oluwo Dollar. Some call him Oluwo Dollar. So before he leaves today, we'll have to drop some dollar for me. <laughs> you won't believe that <laughs> he finished ministering yesterday in Manchester at about 7.30 and got into a vehicle to drive him into Leicester. I persuaded him and did all kinds of things for him not to come. I said, don't stress yourself. You're not getting younger. It's going to be 70 in February. I said, you're not getting any younger. Please stay. He said, no. I don't know why, but we're coming, and we made a commitment just to fellowship with you. And then I said, okay, would you do the first night? I, I, he said, no, I'm preparing a message for tomorrow, not for tonight. You would do it. And just, can you imagine the sacrifice of leaving everything they were doing last night to come here to Leicester, and the moment we finish now, they pick their luggage again and go back to Manchester in order to minister tomorrow. I told my daughter today, I said, the highest title God ever bestowed a man is that of a friend. And then she said, how about his son? That's who we are. <laughs> Our title is, we are his friend. He's made us his friend. I never, I no longer call you servants. I call, the day you find one friend, that is true. Please, keep them with both hands because they are very, very rare. Many people you call your friends, according to Dr. Somra, is that they are acquaintances, and a number of them are fair weather cocks. Would you please receive the greeting and the prayer of my friend, Dr. Babajide Olohodola. Thank you, sir. Let's rise and pray together. We cry in our hearts that the Lord will rent the heavens that the latter rain and the former rain will come together today for us no one who is here today will not be wet as you go back it's a night to remember it's a night that is unforgettable amen Eternal Rock of Ages, we are thankful and grateful for this time. It is a day you have made in the which you have ordained that we should rejoice and be glad. Daddy, the time is now. I will ask that the heavens will open. Let the dew of heaven come, O oh God, gently on everyone. Give us a fresh Pentecost. Oh God, that we will see your glory in this place. As of the only begotten of the Father that is full of grace and truth. Holy Ghost of God, please have your way. Have your way without restraint. Have your way. Daddy, please have your way. Lord, 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 please have your way. Let your word be fire in our bones. Let it be hammer over our hearts. But we live here changed children of God. Thank you, our Father. The glory of this service is at your feet. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy, you have the right of way. Let there be no hindrance. Our prayer is in Jesus' name, and God's people say, Amen. Yeah. 
praise the name of the Lord. I like to lay foundation for tomorrow. And I want you to please give me your maximum attention. I'm so glad that you are the envoy nation with a commission. And as I meditated on the theme of your conference, your second year conference harvest, the picture of the mountain envisioned by Isaiah came very strong to me. In Isaiah 25, verses 6 and 7, Isaiah began to speak about a particular mountain. In verse number 6, he said, And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces. If you don't understand that, you have to go back to the day before Prophet Samuel met Saul, who become king. And he said, there are some part of the sacrifice that I preserved for you. Because God had spoken to him the day before. By this time tomorrow, I'm bringing one that will be captain over my people to you. And while he performed the sacrifice, he kept a portion for a man he had not met. <laughs> you know, something needs to happen to church once again. That we understand and know the person, the power, the presence and the purpose of the Holy Spirit to prepare us before time will come so that we can possess the future in the present. <laughs> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow. Have you ever taken uh, goat meat? That's, that's a difficult thing for me. You know, someone wrote a letter to the church. He said, what do you behave like the devil going to and through the earth? And I said, because you have not read your Bible. He said, the eyes of God are going to and through the earth. I'm not following the devil. I'm following the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> you don't get mad with people who are offended so easily. I read that again. And this mountain, the Lord of hosts, we make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow. I got there and said, if you ever crack goat meat and open the, the, the bones, and there's, there's marrow there that is, if you have not been a Muslim, you can't understand that. Uh, we, we will camp around it and, and crack it and get to the marrow. It's so delicious, okay? A feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of where refined wines on the lees. Oh, God bless my mother in heaven. She said to me, if you have fed your children well, with all kinds of good food, when they get to your neighbor who is offering them something substandard, they will not be derailed or be even fascinated by such food. When you are well fed with choice meal, there's nothing new ages can offer you. There's nothing the world can offer you. He said, there's a mountain 
upon which you'll be fed with choice meal. And, uh, okay, I'm still moving up and down. And what thing will happen when you are that well fed and when you are satisfied with the wine of the Lord? In next verse, it will destroy on this mountain the service of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. If you have read your Bible very well, it said, If our gospel be hidden, it is hidden to them that are lost. In whom the God of this age had blinded the minds of people. There is a veil of ignorance. There is a veil of all kinds of veils the enemy puts on people's eyes that they can't see well. But today, in the name of Jesus, those veils will be removed Amen. from your mind. Amen. The enemy will never succeed derailing you, defeating you, distracting you. Because of a veil that you cannot see because you'll be so well fed that you will see things clearly. You will operate in superior discernment. And no one will deceive you, derail you, defeat you in Jesus' mighty name. I asked uh, Pimo, I said, Pimo, the envoy with a commission, what's he all about? And he said, that's why you're here. You would tell us, I said, no, your husband received the name, I didn't receive it. Uh, I would like to let you know that the name of your church thrills me. It's a good place to start. It thrills me. I've seen all kinds of names, and if you really want to know, uh, all churches registered in Nigeria, you can go to the site of the body that is registering, or go to Port Harcourt and see different names of ministries, you, you will want to take uh, the next available flight to get out of the city. But the Envoy Nation with a commission, you want me to share with you what registered in my spirit? Number one, is not every ambassador or every envoy that has a portfolio. There are ambassadors with our portfolio. But when you get an envoy or an ambassador, plenty potentiary. It means that ambassador can take an action by himself on behalf of his country. He has full powers to commit his country. So when you are an envoy with a commission, it simply means you understand the purpose for which the church is established. That while Christ was here, God was in Christ reconciling the word to himself, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation that each time you stand to speak as such an envoy with a commission, the the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus to bring all mankind back to God is uppermost in your mind. You are not uh, gathering people to take advantage of them to gather prosperity without purpose. You are there because God has finished the work and he has now positioned you to be an envoy with a commission to bring people back to him. And that's the Thing you are seeing, and that's what is thrilling me. We are 200, we are 400. You are going to leave this place soon and appoint new elders to continue to because you are going to another place and you will still go to another place. And we are not finishing till we finish. Tell your neighbor there's no flying till we finish. If you want to go to heaven, go quickly. You meet him coming from heaven to come here. You meet on the way and we'll all be here together with him. That does not mean heaven does not exist. Heaven is real and heaven exists. But I know that heaven was not created for God. It was created for man. And many people don't know that. He wants heaven to be over us. Is in us, is with us, is over us. He wants the days of heaven upon the earth that we will carry heaven wherever we go. That heaven is in our heart, not just necessarily a location where we'll go when we die. To be in the spirit is to be in heaven. I had a voice that says, come up here and I will show you the things that will happen hereafter. Immediately, I step into the spirit and the door opened in heaven. 
Are you conscious that the distance between heaven and earth is no more than the conversation distance between Nicodemus and Jesus? He said, no one has ever ascended to heaven at any time except the Son of Man who came from heaven and who is in heaven now. And every time he wants to circumvent what I call the, the, the world creation process, he will just look up to heaven and make things happen. He will take five loaves and two fish and look up to heaven, give it into their hands, and they will feed 5,000 people. Uh, I don't want to go into that because we are here because of harvest, all right? Uh, when I saw the name Envoy, I was still figuring out Envoy Nation with commission. Then he sent, he said, the theme is harvest. I said, this man has killed me. He has a way of putting pressure on me because many people don't understand what harvest is. There is more. Because you call it the envoy nation. You are making a statement in the spirit, sir. Be my judge and witness as I'm saying this and be able, if I'm wrong, take the microphone, correct me. <laughs> when you say the envoy nation, you are making a loud statement. Can I ask you a question? You led the worship this evening, didn't you? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Is that a prayer? Is it a demand? Is it a command? What is it? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come is a declaration of war. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are saying there's a kingdom that is here that we want to uproot mm. and we want to replace. Here comes the people that turn the world upside down. Are you following me? And so when you say the envoy nation, you are declaring what many can see because you are creating a nation within a nation. It will be exactly like Goshen was a country in the country of Egypt. Do you understand? Genesis. I'll get to have it soon. I just want to deal with this name because it thrills me. Genesis. Chapter number 47. Please pay attention. Joseph was already in Egypt before he revealed himself to his brothers who sold him. Genesis 47. And if you look at verse number 11. And Joseph situated his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of where? Egypt. Where? Egypt. He gave them a possession in the land of Egypt. That land was where? Is it part of Egypt? Okay. In the best of the land, in the land of the Ramses, and as Pharaoh had commanded. Go on. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread, according to the number in their families. Next verse. Now there was no bread in all the land. Wow. Oh, you didn't get that. There was no bread in all the land. For the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, where they migrated from, languished because of the famine. So, what has Goshen become at this time? Was it still in the land of Egypt? You will say so. But look with me, Genesis 47, <laughs> verse number. 27. Genesis 47, 27. So Israel dwelt where? In the land of Egypt, where? In the country of Goshen, and they had possession there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. Only God can create a country within a country. Wow. Do you understand? So when he says you are envoy nation, he was creating a holy nation within a fallen nation to bring the fallen back to God. I'm not sure you're getting me. 
Someone will read that and say, oh, Goshen was on the countryside. What I read in my Bible, he said, and Goshen was a country within a country. You are a holy nation, a peculiar people. You are in the world, not of the world. You are here to raise the standard of God's kingdom and bring them back to that standard. Do you understand? So when you hear envoy nation with commission, you know you are different. You have to be different in order to make a difference. You can't just blend with everyone and just go along with them. No. I don't mind being alone. As long as God is on my side. If God is on your side, there's no other side. (laughs) Tell your neighbor, if God is on your side, there's no other side. Hallelujah. I want to thank my son for your kind invitation to be here. And um, I look forward to a wonderful time tomorrow. In your video advert, I followed it keenly to get what's in your spirit. He said, this is your time of harvest. Anyone who believes that here? Yes. Or oh, you didn't? You just prepared the video. You didn't, you didn't see it? Oh, there it's written. I heard it. I saw it written. This is your season of harvest. How many of you believe that? My friend said to me as I sat there, I said, but there is no harvest without seed. You remember he said, so, sir, good. Have you been sowing good seed? Bow down your heads. Father, the entrance of your wall brings light and understanding to the simple. By the auspices of the Holy Spirit, we receive now inspiration, illumination, and revelation. Because you are the Lord of the harvest, we trust God that no seed sown in the past will go without a harvest. Even when men have forgotten about the seed, you, the Lord of harvest, will bring forth their harvest in this due season. In the mighty name of Jesus, we acknowledge you as the Lord of the harvest, and we trust you that we will not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble. In Jesus' mighty name, and trust you, Father, that this church, we go into the harvest field here in Leicester and everywhere in the UK and the rest of the world, and begin to lay hold of the harvest of the Lord and bring men back to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In line with apostolic tradition, if you don't know that, just follow me. You'll soon find out. I would like to go systematically in such a way. What time do we finish tonight? When I finish, okay. Look, they are traveling. I have to remember them. Oh, I didn't tell you that he was the founding pastor of Asokoro uh, Foursquare Gospel Church, the assembly. Uh, of his excellency, is he excellence or excellency? Excellence, yeah. And he's now the chairman of Omega Global Mission. There are people we are partnering with, and I'm not going to encourage you to do so with them, because they sustain many missionaries all over the world who could not provide for themselves yet in the field. And they've done that over the years. And uh, we will continue to do a little bit to encourage them. And uh, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Um, and in the apostolic tradition of the lives of Apostle Paul, their standard when they get to a location, a territory, is not just to preach. It's to give the whole counsel of God. You know, I don't like going to churches in the UK to preach. I've done a, a bit at, by God's grace, commission several ministry. I don't like going there because they will spend all the time dancing. I'm not saying it's not worship, uh, but sometimes it's entertainment. And they will spend all the time dancing. They will spend all the time raising offering. And then they will bring you from across the seas and the oceans and say, sir, you have 40 minutes. God is my witness for today and tomorrow. 
Every day that I try to prepare a message, I'll wake up at 3, I'll finish about 12 noon the following day. And then you come and say, you have 40 minutes to go. <laughs> but also because my friends are traveling, I have to be careful tonight, because I was at the first school life theological seminary. Temidara was the uh, provost then, or Reverend Temidara. And I said, how long do I have? He said, as long as you will. They just killed a cow that they were going to cook. So everybody left the cow and came to the hall. They gave me the microphone at 8. I dropped it at 3 a.m. The cow went bad. I won't let that happen today. <laughs> <laughs> I will not preach the everlasting gospel because we still have a whole service tomorrow. All right? And it's going to be fun. I'm just laying foundation. I want you to have the whole counsel of God. So I've chosen as a title for my message today and tomorrow. Are you ready? Yes. Apostolic dimensions of the harvest. <laughs> Apostolic dimensions of the harvest. And um, when you hear such a title, someone would like to ask, are there other dimensions like the prophetic and evangelistic dimensions of the harvest? Yes, there are. I bless the name of the Lord God Almighty for the good memory of my father and mentor, Dr. Lester Frank Somer. He taught me these things to identify and to know the differences in the giftings called the ascension gifts. But for him, bringing that elucidation, I would think we are all doing the same thing and we are all after a common goal. Yes, a common goal, but the graces are different. If you want to understand the difference between the apostolic dimension and the evangelistic dimension, you go to Samaria. There you will see a man by the name called Philip. He was a deacon who became an evangelist. And he encountered a sorcerer there who submitted to God and he was baptized, yet iniquity and poison of bitterness was still in him. The evangelist could not locate it until the apostles came. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. It's not that the evangelist was wrong in ministry. And the Bible says, and Simon believed yeah. and was baptized, and he continued with Philip. But when the apostles came in, they laid hands on them to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. And what was in Simon rose up again. You know, you can buy everything. Everyone can be settled with cash and offer the money. And Peter said, your money perishes with you. You're bound by the poison, by iniquity, and you have the poison of bitterness in you. The evangelist did not see that because his grace did not cover that ground. Wow. So I'm not trying to say one is better than the other. Now, can I teach you what my father taught me? He said the, the role of the apostles is to govern. Mm -hmm. Look through your Bible and you will see they continue steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Look further in Acts chapter 16 or 15, you will see that when there was dispute, over circumcision, it was the apostles and elders that solved it. And you step into Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, it was the decree of the apostles and the elders that were delivered to the church, and the churches were strengthened and they increased. Mm. Don't explain it away. The role of the apostles in the body of Christ is to govern. That does not make them dictators, but they are governing in the spirit. They can pick things faster. Why? Because it pleased God that apostles and prophets, alongside with Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, will be the foundation of the church. You can't explain it away. That's what do the apostles do? They govern. they govern. How about the prophets? They guide. They guide. You can go through your Bible and see Agabus in the New Testament. It would tell you a famine is coming. It would tell Paul, this is what will happen to you. Their role is to guide. And there's a prophetic dimension of the harvest. 
If you want to understand that, you go to Amos chapter 9. I'm laying foundation tonight. And you will see where Amos prophesied that the seasons will collide. That the reaper will overtake the man who is sowing. That the season will collide in your life and you'll not be able to say whether this is sowing season or reaping season because before you put the seed down, harvest had come. And the way to trigger that prophetic dimension is to obey the word of God. You read in Leviticus 26 that when you begin to obey the statutes, the judgments, and the commandments of God, and you make it a lifestyle in your life, the seasons will collide. You have to carry out the old in order to bring in the new. I've experienced that again and again, and I'm almost saying to God, I'm tired. I will look in my wardrobe and take 30 suits, 30 shirts, 30 shoes, and give it out. I've had enough. Don't give me this anymore. And before I say Jack Robinson, the place is full again. When you begin to live in that, or practice that type of lifestyle, you don't know whether it's sowing season or reaping season because the seasons collide over your life. I'm going to go into some deeper things. So what do the prophets do? They guide. What do evangelists do? They gather. Their role is to gather. And if you want to understand that, that's why a person like Philip, we gather, you just gather all kinds, sorcerer, witch, witch, you will just bring them to church. And if care is not taken, you begin the ministry of deliverance. That's all you spend your time on. I don't want to mention names, but the only mountain that has fire is not Zion. Okay, let me leave that. <laughs> because upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and holiness. The house of Jacob will possess their possession. What mountain had fire that Moses was so afraid? It, oh, you know, Mount Sinai. There's those who are there. Their major preoccupation is deliverance morning, afternoon, evening. They deliver today, they deliver tomorrow, they deliver next tomorrow, and you just jump into it and see the crowd because evangelists gather. Pastors don't just gather. They guard. They're willing to lay down their lives for the flock. And the good, the great, and the chief shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ. Is our example. I'm, I'm going to have as I'm laying the foundation. Do you understand me? He, he said, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A clear example among humans is David. Who will fight with the lion, who will fight with the bear, just to protect the life of the flock. Good pastors don't take advantage of the flock. They provide advantage for the flock. They feed them with knowledge and understanding so that they will not be dismayed, they will not be afraid, and they will lack nothing. And if you have a bunch of people who lack in your ministry, you should be held responsible because you're not feeding them with the right stuff. Okay, I can go home. Apostles govern, prophets guide, evangelists gather, pastors guard, and teachers ground them in the word. They ground them in the word. You can look at Colossians, you can look there, uh, and it says, be grounded. You are grounded in the word of faith, and you are rooted, and you are built up in him. That's their job. They are not competing. They are not in competition. See, you take the prophets, the apostles and prophets out of the church, you have a church without foundation. And if you really want to believe, you will have to read 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 17. Give me that and see why there are three of them as foundation. 1 Kings 5, 17. I'm waiting for you to give it to me on the screen. Thank you. And the king commanded them to quarry what? Large stones. And what? Costly stones. And what? Hewn stones to lay the foundation of the temple. How many types of stones? Large stones. Costly stones and hewn stones. And you go to Ephesians chapter 2. He said, You are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Take that foundation out of the church, what you have is crowd. So, do you understand when I say apostolic dimensions of the harvest? Huh? 
or you want me to give you the evangelistic dimensions of the harvest that we are going to go to the field and we are going to witness to everyone and we are going to bring them into the house. It is not wrong. That is that dimension of being your brothers, of, 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 of laying the foundation of soul winning in your heart that like Jesus Christ, you are, you are passionate about souls. And want, it's not wrong. But what I get labeled. I'm telling you, the one who descended and ascended and gave gifts unto men, he knew why he gave everyone. They are not in competition. They complement one another. Can I hear amen? amen? Okay. Apostolic dimension of the harvest. Are you ready? Yes. What is harvest? You know, when I come to Churches where I see them in jeans, some of them torn, some of them not torn. I, I ask them, who tore your, they say, no, that is, is, <laughs> it's fashion. I'm not against it. When I come, I know these are Google generations. So please turn to Google and put harvest. And see what it calls harvest. Go there, go there, go there. Please don't, if you have Wi-Fi, go to Google. To the Google generation, the symbolic, I'm reading from Google. Uh, in order to catch you, I have to start somewhere. Because you will not listen. I was told that in England, about two years ago now, that we have a problem in the UK. Our children don't listen to us. They go to Google for everything. Are you part of Google generation or Holy Ghost generation? Let's read Google first. The symbolic meaning of harvest in scripture encompasses two main areas. One, God's provision for us, and two, God's blessings for others. May I tell you, as true as this may be, the harvest that we have in our lives don't belong to us. They belong to the Lord of the harvest. Uh, can, I, can I just uh, play on words a little? Uh, as long as I'm communicating truth and not just uh, uh, play into the gallery. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the favor of the Lord. I was joining a couple in uh, in um, the Onifade's son in Italy. And I said, do you know this woman? He said, oh, yes, we grew up in the same church. I know her. And that, I said, you really know her? I said, yes, OK. After you're married tonight, when will she become pregnant? He said, I don't know. <laughs> what type of child will he have first? Will she have first? I don't know. Hmm. When she's pregnant, will she be as good looking as this? Or she will be spitting, and the neck will be long? He said, I don't know. I said, you think you really know, but you don't know. Marriage is the only school you get certificate the first day you enroll. Yes, sir. So that the exams can follow. Ask Professor Kolade. <laughs> In other universities, you go through sessions of examination to become qualified for the next class. In marriage, you get certificate first. Tests will follow. But see, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains the favor of the Lord. But how about the fruit of the womb? <laughs> Children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. So whose fruit is he? His. But you think the harvest is yours? No, just children are not yours. They are his. Your job is not yours. The salaries you earn is not yours. Somebody gives you strength and health to be able to do that. They are part of his investment in you so that it remains a lot of harvest over your life. Wow. Wow. All 
website. Enough of Google. But just know that our jobs, our careers, our professional skills and our trades belong to the Lord of Harvest. The money we earn from everything we do belongs to the Lord of Harvest, including our bonuses. They are His. Now let me go straight to the apostolic dimensions of the harvest. Are you ready? I can hear you. Hmm. I have to jump so many things. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Whenever you hear the word harvest, what comes to your mind? Our choir leader, when you hear the word harvest, what comes to your mind? To reap. So how many of you truly believe that if there's going to be a reaping, there must be a sowing? I can't hear you. I believe also, it's in the word. It will be mockery to God for you to reap where you don't sow. It's true. But is that a statute of general application? Is that always true? Is that the truth? Have you read Matthew? The birds of the air. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't gather into band. And your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of greater value than birds? Now, please, before you think I'm contradicting the word, no, I am not. I'm just letting you see that we are limited sometimes, and that's why you despise those who seem to be making it big time. You begin to think there must be other things they are doing. No, I'm going to take you there. Now, wait for a moment. You remember the Moabites by the name of Ruth? And she came to the field of who? Boaz. Who directed her there? Nobody. She just was guided by God to go there. And uh, did she sow any seed? Oh, please talk to me. Because I mentioned birds. You said those are birds. But how about Ruth? Ruth stepped in there. The day Ruth stepped in there was the day Boaz came to the field. Mm -hmm. Before the day was over and the time of harvest was over, sir, Ruth became co-owner of the field. Mm -hmm. wow. So I've, I've said it, I believe it, it needs to be taught and made clear that the Lord of the harvest can circumvent the process of world creation and bring to you what you don't deserve. Yes. But it will take you through a time of rigorous testing. It does not use an untested vessel. Okay. Now here is the balance. There's no sowing without reaping. But there can be reaping Without sowing. Huh? There can be reaping without sowing because somebody apart from you sowed. <laughs> I'm not sure you got this. I'm not contradicting what we said, that if there's going to be harvest, there must be seed. But you don't have to be the one who sow. Yeah. Somebody else could sow. <laughs> the birds of the air, they don't sow. They don't reap. They don't gather into band. Your heavenly Father feeds them by allowing others to sow where they will come and reap. So in like manner, Boaz and his men in the field sold. And the co-owner of the field 
was still far away in the land of Moab. And so one day this widow stepped into the field and began to gather from the harvest of others who sold. And the owner of the field said, you know what? This is special. Make sure you drop more than necessary. Just drop them and let her pick them up. You know, many people will be bound by the spirit of lack and poverty because they feel they must so work hard. That the result they have in life is the result of their hard work. I work hard, but I work smart. I know God can go beyond my sowing to give me harvest that I do not just deserve. Okay, this is the balance again. I don't want you to go and run with error. The reason the Moabites by the name of Ruth reaped was because he sowed in the land he was coming from and she did not receive any harvest. So God of harvest waited to compensate her. Oh, you say, that's not written in my Bible. Let's read the book of Ruth. I'm declaring the whole counsel of God on the subject of harvest. Ruth, chapter 2, verse number 8. Or oh, let me start from verse number 4. Let's start from verse number 4 to see that for 10 years, this woman labored in the house of the Elimelechs, had no child. She had a sister who was married to the second brother. They both were not having children. Their husbands died. It was time for Naomi to go back. Ruth and Opas clave unto her. And then they said they will go all the way with us. Uh, 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 uh. Even if I marry tomorrow, there's no child left here. And I have a child. Will you wait? No, 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 no. Go back to your family. Go back. The Lord be with you. And Oprah kissed her mm -hmm. goodbye. And as she turned back, Ruth brought the final card out. Go back along with your sister and go back to your gods. And she said, no. Whither thou goest, I go. Where you leave, I live. Where you die, I die. Whether there will be husband or no husband. The Lord do more so to me. If I leave you alone. She became persuaded. He said, you have paid the price. Let's go. All the labor of that period that she had no significant harvest for, the Lord of harvest kept it for her. Your payday is around the corner. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ruth chapter 2, verse number 4. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? There are some things I can't explain to you except you have experienced them. Was she the only woman in the field? What stood her out? What was it that stood David out? There were seven brothers before her. Before him, I beg your pardon. It was the eighth son and the last. What stood him out? I mean, when Samuel said, I'm here to anoint the next king of Israel. Hey, their father, Jesus said, I know those who qualify for this. Presented the firstborn. You know Swagger? <laughs> Come on. He did his swagger. <laughs> the Lord said, I've refused him. In fact, Samuel said, the anointed of the Lord is before him. He said, nah, nah, nah. You judge by externalities. I check inside. These ones, I've refused him. Next one, I've refused him. That one, I've refused him. You don't really get to know. And I'm not asking you to begin to become a Christian, to go study the Quran. No, 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 no. I'm just giving you the benefit of where I've been. 
you understand, in one of their deeds, when God, when they were writing about David, do you know what they wrote in their hadith? He says, when you get to the house of Jesse, and he paraded his sons before you, one of them, there will be light shining on his head like this. Wow. Whether it's concocted, <laughs> if it's a true or false, I don't know. And you will see the light. You will recognize that's the one to be anointed. Jesse forgot about David. Samuel said, am I in a wrong house? He said, no. Are these all the children? said, there is still one. But I do not want to present him because it's not normal. He can come here and say, I hear the Lord say to my Lord, sit down under my right hand. It's not well. It's, 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 it's hearing voices. He said, we will not sit down until he comes. You see, everyone who considers you abnormal do not know you're abnormal because you're super normal. Yes, do you understand me? They don't know why you are the way you are. Sometimes I can't explain myself to people. You have to either love me or hate me, but it makes no difference to me. It keeps me going. She was not the only woman in the field, but the Lord of Harvest had singled her out. Who is this woman? Let's listen to the story. I'm trying to give you the whole counsel of God regarding the word harvest. Ah, verse number five. Then Boaz said to his servant who was in charge of the reapers, whose young man is this? Verse number six. So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, it is there. Somebody say there. Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. It didn't say a young woman. It is the young woman. You read in your Bible, so this is the story of Jacob. Jacob, Joseph, being 17 years old. Does that make sense? This is the story of Jacob, Joseph, being 17. Everything that Jacob came to do in the world is to produce Joseph. And Jesse, the Bethlehemite, was an old man who had eight sons, but David was the son. <laughs> Does it make sense? David was the son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, a man who had eight sons, but David was the son. Now, once upon a time in 1 Samuel 16, David was his son. Mm. But when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, it became the son. I'm so excited about my 70th birthday memoir that I'm writing. And maybe you will do the book review because you're smart. Do you understand me? You know the title? The last but not the least. <laughs> my father had 22 children. I'm the last. But the only one alive. They are gone. I'm the last but not the least. How about if God wants to distinguish you tonight? Not because of your hard work. <laughs> not because of your... I am not against you working hard. It takes elbow grease to make gold. But listen to me. Yeah? All right. So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said... It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. So she came and has continued from money until now, though she rested a little in the house. Even the servant of Boaz was watching her. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter. What is that? What is that? What is that? The servant called her Moabites. Boaz called him daughter. The spirit of adoption. Hey. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter. Will you not? Do not go to glean another field. No, go from here, but stay close by my young women. So there were other women there. Let your eyes be on the field, which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? 
And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, sorry, I'm in England. Uh-huh. There are those who walk like elephant and eat like ants. And there are those who walk like ant. Gather their food in summer. And they will not lack in winter. Because God has endowed them with wisdom. You understand me? So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found labor in your field? Why have I found favor in your eyes? That you should take notice of me since I'm a foreigner. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth and have come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work. He is the Lord of the harvest. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel under whose wings you have come for refuge. Can I continue? Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I'm not like one of your maidservants. I don't even fit into the class. He's the one that qualifies those who are not qualified. Oh, God, help me tonight. I'm explaining the whole counsel of God regarding harvest. So if you hear the word harvest, and sowing and reaping comes to your mind. You may be materialistic. But I will not judge you. Because there's another sowing that brings harvest. And we'll deal more with that tomorrow. But let me introduce it to you. Is sowing the incorruptible seed of the word of God that brings the harvest of choice souls into his kingdom. It's not just material things. When you hear harvest, there is harvest of souls. But some will have to labor to sow the seed, the incorruptible seed of the word, into hearts of men who may not receive it today or who are still pondering in their mind. So you find Paul planting, Apollo watering, and P.D. comes to reap. Can that happen? John chapter 4. Do you not say in four months will be harvest? But I, the Lord of harvest, I'm saying to you, lift up your eyes and see. The field is white already. I'm sending you to reap where you do not bestow labor. Others have labored. You are entering into their harvest. Can I hear amen? (laughs) My Lord. I want to finish on time. Am I making sense to you? I want you to stand to your feet momentarily. I want you to pray to the Lord of Harvest to send you as a laborer, not into sowing. You didn't hear me. Pray the Lord of Harvest to send you into his harvest because others have labored. The Lord himself had done some work, but the harvest is ripe and he does not want wasted efforts or ripened harvest that will go into waste. Ask God to send you into that place, that time, so that you'll be the right man at the right place, the right woman at the right place in the right time for the right seasons. In the name of Jesus, don't just hang on your what you have done. Begin to turn to the Lord of Harvest to send you to put in the sickle because the harvest has come. Lord, we glorify you today. We bless you for what you're enriching our lives with regarding harvest today. You are the Lord of Harvest. And I'm asking you, Father, that you send the people under the sound of my voice today to your harvest because the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. I pray that they will put in their sickle and bring in the right harvest into the kingdom in this season 
and this time in Jesus mighty name Amen. please be seated let me spend the next 15 minutes or 30 max to round off this message did you gain anything today yes, are you sure yes, uh -huh. are you going to be doing Ishen Lan La Wu Ke 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 Ishen Lan La means heavy duty walk you walk so hard but you reap so little do you know do you know do you know, do you know that you know that the harvest is always greater than the seed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have a clue? What's your name again? Tayo. Alafia Tayo is my bag carrier. He offered to carry my bag, so I'll give something to him. Is that okay? Tayo. How many seeds are in a mango? One seed. How many mangoes can be in that seed? So you see the evil you do to yourself when you eat your seed and don't leave some to sow. There's only one seed in a mango. But there are too many mangoes in a seed. In fact, it can produce a forest of mangoes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> How do you distinguish the difference between the seed and the bread? Mm -hmm. Mm. Can I teach you a little thing here? Yes, Who gives seed to the soil? I can hear you. God. Put your hands together for yourself. God gives 